Okay. Okay, hello everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss on, uh, I mean, I'm going to conduct a, sem a seminar for IGCSE at Math 0606. Okay, there are two paper in this component. One is paper one and paper two. Okay, so I'm going to present for this. We will cover a lot of important stuff in the seminar. It will be very helpful for you. Okay, so before we start, um, you know, this logo, I don't know for what, but I just saw it's on the paper, so I decided to put. So this is apparently the Cambridge motif. Uh, they want to make sure that, you know, you when after you finish the Atmos people so call, you must be confident, be responsible, reflective, innovative, engaged, or whatever. It's just the ice breaking. But the whole point of this thing, what I want to start off first with, the most important thing, your ethics and what you should know to bring before going to your exam hall. Okay, this is a very common question that I get from my class 11.7 or even in uh, 11.2, 11.3, okay. Actually, I make this video is after your mock one. So there are a couple of questions that came up. Okay, there, these are the most common questions that I get. That student ask me actually, uh, will they go for predicted grade or not? Okay, because they say the cases is going high and we are not sure whether we're going back to school or not. So it's not fair. Okay, to answer this question, I'm sorry, I'm not the right person to answer this, but only the school management can answer you on that part. But like I said, any plan or anything will be keep you the school will keep you updated from time to time as for now for my knowledge the igcse paper will still run as planned that means you will sit the physical paper in our school following the same procedure so when you sit in the school what are the most important thing you need to know first you want to check on your what we call that on your timetable because later miss lena or one of the exam department from sgis will give you your timetable and there you'll state it whether it's am session or pm session when you get your what we call that uh, your uh, candidature slip okay in the candidature slip check your number is correct or not your registration detail your ic passport name and the register subjects everything listed together with the correct subject code so if you are taking core paper it should be core if you're taking for admits it must be 0606 two paper paper one and paper two, two component now after you check that make sure you check on the time and the date okay make sure you set an alarm immediately once you see set an alarm that this is the time this is the date this kind of things you need to let know and another thing you must check is whether your paper is am session or pm session they have a very fixed time for am session and pm session so take note of that and make sure it doesn't clash with any of your other subject most important thing to bring into your exam hall is scientific calculator make sure you really check your battery um, most of you has been using a calculator for years I don't know how many years okay and you didn't change the battery probably you might want to change the battery okay and then make sure you have an adequate pen black color pen or blue color pen don't use other than that color okay these are the two color it's a ball pen don't use gel pen that's one do not try not to use correction tape just cut out okay, even in the exam also I teach you guys when you do a mistake just cancel just take a ruler and cut okay of course in the exam you'll be panic you know you'll scribble try not to use correction tape because i think you you should know by now already okay liquid paper and correction tape is prohibited so just cut use a ruler and cut is enough on top of that any drawing any sketching use pencil okay in atmos we don't have craft but sketch we have so use pencil and uh, yeah so i was saying bring scientific calculator check for your battery bring a pen and then a ruler pencil station it make sure the pencil is to be and on top of that what else did i miss oh yeah let's say in the exam in the exam your calculator you run out of battery what the protector the proctor has spare calculator but please be minded that the calculator might not be the calculator that you are using because you remember in the class i always tell you guys to use the black color calculator case you black one the modern one whereby it able to calculate cert form okay so the proctor might not be having that so in case you don't have that calculator then you'll be in trouble so my advice for you just go to the watch shop any shop okay you can go watch shop even 99 speed models is doing that today and even kk might you can just go tell them give your calculator you open the screw they will change for you the calculator battery okay it's a watch size battery i'm not sure what's the size nickel something eight or nine ringgit only okay get changed that calculator you don't need any geometry tool but if you want to be safe you can bring it will be known in advanced people you won't need that so with that let's start with our seminar for today so like i said in cambridge learner what you should know must be responsible don't cheat reflective that means reflect after you do your mock to see whether it's okay or what you can prepare innovative that means every question you should be initiative i mean do it creatively engage and be confident when you do the paper that's the most important no matter what happened in the exam hall be confident okay now let's start so like i was saying earlier this um, atmos paper you have two two paper paper one and paper two so if you notice both paper 
is two hour paper okay both hour is both paper is two hour and this is another common question that students ask me before they say that uh, so what's the difference between paper one and paper two you see when you talk about 0580 okay 0580 mathematics they have paper one hey why is not coming up okay never mind they have uh, what we call that paper one and they also have paper two okay just give me a second uh something went wrong here okay uh wait uh, guys okay yeah it's working now so yeah, i don't know why my style is in work earlier so i was saying um, in 0580, okay, 0580, you got paper 1 and also you got paper, not to say paper 1, I mean paper 1 is for the core student, you have paper 2 and paper 4, okay, doesn't matter what's the paper, but they have a very clear objective, you know, usually the first two paper, either paper 1 or paper 2, they test on short answer question, whereby paper 3 and 4, they'll test on long structured question, okay, so these are the prominent difference, but in ad maths, we don't have such thing, okay, paper 1 and paper 2 the format is the same so then then student asked me then so why we want to have two paper why not we just have a single paper okay to answer that question in at maths you got total 16 chapter as for today okay based on Cambridge syllabus you got 16 chapter in 16 chapter of course at maths even you touch a basic question itself it take 5 to 6 mark or maybe 10 mark so they can't fit everything in one single paper what they do this 16 chapter is split into 8 chapters and eight chapters but not all the time they follow this concept okay so they will split eight chapters into paper one eight chapters in paper two but you will notice a certain chapter will be repeated in both paper and the common chapter that will be repeated in both paper i'll share with you very common but this is not the rules this is not a rules or something set by cambridge but this is the common one uh differentiation integration polynomial these three chapters commonly they will repeat in two paper why they repeat like i said 16 chapter so probably the first first paper they might put 10 chapters to give you 80 marks and then the second chapter the second paper they might put another so let's say remaining six questions so they might short a mark so to play it well they will balance it equally but the differentiation integration polynomial at very rare occasion you might see uh, permutation and combination this chapter this chapter might be care they might release in these two paper one and paper two why i'm telling this because i have students who actually ask me they have this concept they thought that you know paper one is for a certain thing paper two is for a certain thing it's not like that okay it's because to divide the chapter but it's still equal so one thing you can know is other than this chapter other than this chapter like vector circular measure um indices logarithmic trigonometry <laughs> this kind of chapters usually if come out in paper one it won't come out in paper two if come out in paper two it won't come out in paper one but this one is a very common pattern that they will repeat in both paper so you might want to take note on that so why they choose this specific topic because differentiation is a huge chapter in at maths it has total 12 subtopic so they might not be able to test you all the required subtopic in the paper one so they'll bring back in paper two integration also the same integration got a lot of i think about eight subtopic so the last two three is the you know finding the area finding the shared region those kind of thing so they not, might not be able to fit in everything together so that is why they repeat and for polynomial the very common one is you know they talk about factor this and that all but of course we got another part where we need to factorize that one only we couldn't cover so that's the reason why but permutation combination i think is a buffer because why they put permutation combination probably you shot by one or two mark you can't expect to put differentiation so that is why they will you know they will choose uh, permutation combination it's just a buffer and then one i think both you can see the difference between both paper both paper 80 marks that's one must answer all the question scientific calculator are required in both paper externally assessed externally means external examiner will check your paper and mark so how are their process that's not our problem our problem is we do it properly now candidates are eligible for a star to e grade f and g will not be able well simply what they mean by the sentence you must take note huh? okay you know who you are i'm not telling anyone but please be minded if you ever get any marks or grade lower than e onwards in your exam slate at maths won't be written probably they'll write that ungraded or not available i'm not sure i never encountered this before but this screenshot okay this slide is actually i take from the latest 
uh, document from Cambridge website itself under syllabus update. This this syllabus is updated on 2021. So this is valid from 2021 to 2022. So that means this is a very reliable source and also a, a what we call a verified source. Okay. So please take note, you are only you must get at least between A A star to E. <coughs> so if you get anything out than that, your your what we call that your result the your what we call it when you get your result uh, this this subject won't be reflected in the, the result slip so please work hard the lowest point you can get is e i think the next slide i will talk about the point if i'm not mistaken let's see yep the next slide we will discuss a little bit on that then you will know what is the range of values from a star to e so what are the values that is considered kick out from you know getting that and then there also a candidate who do not achieve the minimum mark of grade e will be unclassified so remember this i was telling you i didn't read properly that means f and g if you ever get a marks below than e they'll just put u that means um in your exam slip you'll see this at maths of course they won't write short form they write additional mathematics with the code 06 on the grade they just put u so u means it's wasted you sit at maths also no point because you need to retake if you bring this also no value okay so please work hard i i believe all of you all can do it be determined okay now let's look at the next part so this next part is not really important it's more on the teacher's perspective but i want to share with you guys because these are the objective that they do to i mean they base on this objective to create the paper to test you guys so you can see they say they, they the whole paper is tested on two objective um 0, 1 and 0, 2. Okay, no need to know the detail. The detail is they must know the knowledge and understand mathematical techniques. Simply mean you must be able to recall and use mathematical manipulative technique. What they mean by this, you know, you know, when you guys do circular measure question, okay, circular measure, you know, S equals to R theta. O area equals to 1 over 2 R square theta. Some students are too, their mindset locked to only this two formula and they don't think to other things. You see, in circular measure, it's a very big chapter. It can also link to ka, so, and tua. It can also link to Pythagoras. So this is what they mean by this part. You recall and use mathematical manipulative technique. You must be able to use the method that you learn from uh, maths. You remember there's one part in Mock 1. I'm not sure is it Mock 1 or 2017 October November Paper 2 1. The final question number 12. You never thought that you need to use cross-section area in that, correct? Huh? Because we that, that question is actually a differentiation question. But they ask you to find the, you know, they ask you to find dH, dV over dT. They just wrote that uh, the rate of water, water being poured to the container something. So you know dV over dT equals to that particular value. But the problem is that if you don't practice your maths, that means know how to find the volume, the cross-section area of certain polygon or or what we call that shape then you're gonna stuck in this at maths okay so that's why i say this objective is important for you to know the next one interpret and use mathematical data symbol and terminology that means keywords keywords you don't worry this one uh, this excuse me this terminology i will cover later on you can see on my slides i think uh towards the end there here okay we will cover later on on the terminology part so don't worry so much i will explain to you what each word the most common word symbols you should know like theta omega alpha beta what is it for i mean for your level most of the time you'll deal with theta or no means alpha that's the max law all those are constant then mathematical data okay data means like how you decide whether this is rate of change this is small approximation this is polynomial this is indices this is exponential this is long uh, those kind of things to know then comprehend numerical and algebraic spectacle a spatial concept and relationship okay this one whatever they're just telling you they combine all the concept of mathematics into one complete sent paper now apply mathematical technique but this is very crucial recognize the appropriate metal uh, mathematical procedure for a given situation i think this one i can tell you guys one very good example which you did in your mock one there's one question in mock one i think i told in the class also before already um the question was something that is 6x equals to 3 you guys jump straight okay most of you jump straight you straight jump and write log 63 and then you press in your calculator to be honest this one is not wrong okay if you go further study you go for your undergrad study this one is accepted but for your cambridge this is not accepted but because why 
when you learn in your year 10 in your textbook itself they emphasize on converting to log with base 10 because this kind of base you only can calculate in the modern calculator older version calculator is not uh, you can't do that so Cambridge did not endorse this method so please this is what we mean you must know the appropriate mathematical procedure not straight jump that for a six mark question if I'm not missing that was a six mark question you guys jump straight okay so these are the things you should know formula problem into mathematical term this one you guys know lah, okay a lot of things so let's go in detail the weightage of these two objectives is measure 50 50 that means they divide equally in the paper and you can see there they have put here paper one also they will divide the question 50 50 equally here also 50 50 equally okay so these are the kind of things that i think you guys should know lah, okay now let's go on with the mark breakdown i think this is important you should know how to you know do the mark spectrum okay let's talk a little bit on the mark spectrum so you can see here this is not the okay actually i took this from uh, the grade threshold you can just go a uh, rough google when you google uh, they write that just type grade threshold for for certain year this grade grade threshold will change okay it's not a fixed value it will change from years to year it depending on their exam board or so and forth but the point is i take the latest one so you can have a rough idea even change guys don't expect it will change a very significant value like 20 or 30 marks no probably they just change about one to two mark deviation only nothing more than that now if you can see here like i say the minimum mark you can score the minimum mark you can score that means you can see here component paper you plus paper one and paper two can you see a component one two and two two this is a sample we don't know which paper you're going to sit for you might be sitting for one three or one one i don't know but they're saying this component paper the minimum you can get is 28 if you get anything below than that gone kiss okay you'll get you straight and they won't even put in the paper okay so the minimum marks you can only get is e nothing i mean this mark that means paper one combined by paper two they will still put in your exam slate so anything beyond than this don't have so roughly you guys can know already uh what is the mark require to get a a or a star okay but remember this one this great threshold is based on march 2021 okay march 2021 so you can see here to get a star the marks is quite low you know because your total marks of your paper is 160 160 is your total marks so they are telling you get 1118 i think this is quite low okay but this won't happen for the october november series okay they will change i can tell you for safe to save to get an a star minimum mark you must get at least 150 paper one plus paper two to get an a minimum you guys must get 140 so everyone you can drop after that sequence but b i think b should be they have a quite a wide range la. i would say between 100 to 90 100 to 90 no it doesn't make sense to me um i would say around 120 to 100 and then see everything minus by 10 by 10 okay so this is just a very general threshold which is not really that good to base on but i can tell you for you to get a star paper one you should able to get at least 70 okay i'll, I'll just scribble over here i'll just scribble here paper one you should be able to get 70 to get a or a star okay maybe we can start off with a star first okay so to start with get a star i'll put here to get a star you should at least be in this range for both paper 70 plus 70 you must be in this category to get an a star to get an a i think you can go not to say think clock okay, this is based on my experience but 70 is still low usually they will go about 75 okay to get a you can go with 65 65 should be okay already b you should go about 55 plus minus plus minus of 55 c you should go about 40 that means half of the paper okay paper one half paper two half then you can get c about there okay 40 and then d i think should be 30 and the last one should be 20 okay this one you can see is they are optimistic on based on march because march sitting not a lot of student and usually february march they target on a certain region only it's it's not offered in all the region okay so that is why the threshold is slightly lower i mean than usual okay usually is higher you are going for a very competitive environment october november where a lot of receipt will happen so stand by for that okay so i think i already talked about the mark so please take note the minimum you can get is e nothing more than that i mean nothing lesser than so now what i will do the seminar will focus in this 
flow diagram. Initially, I talk about what you should know, what you should prepare, what you should know about the marks and all the system. So now we will go in topic detail. So in the topic detail, what I'm going to do is I will explain to you guys what you should know from this topic. So you can have a rough idea and do your what we call that your revision accordingly. Okay. So let's start first. Now for the first one, we start with function. Okay. When I talk about function, I think I will emphasize what commonly come out in exam. The one that commonly come out in exam is inverse function and where's the word range come on this you see they didn't even put range over here range okay so these are the two things you should know so usually they'll be testing you guys on uh, finding the inverse function and the range okay let me just talk a little bit i think i have told to you in the class i have a very good way to find range i know you guys have your own way you do your way but i want to share my opinion so for me uh, to find range i always tell my student draw a graph I think you guys know okay all the classes i already told about this before draw a graph remember in your graph your y-axis is your range and your x-axis is your domain so when they ask you for range they are basically requesting you to give the limit for your graph gonna be now for an example we talk about x square graph so an x square graph it start from the origin okay let's say i put x square plus 3 for an example so this is going to be the point the graph is going to be something like this okay so if I ask you what is the limit for this graph, you can see the graph starts from 3. It starts from 3 and it keep go up. So anything beyond below than that is not considered. So for this graph, the range is going to be more than equals to 3. Straight away we get one mark. Because my experience marking Mach 1 paper, T1 paper, and even a CT1 paper, I notice most of you guys don't know how to find the range. Okay, you struggle to find the range. You you will have this dilemma, no? you'll be in the middle line thinking between uh Am I supposed to put 0 in the y or the x? Or am I supposed to put 1 or what? You'll be in a dilemma. So to avoid this dilemma, just do what? Plot the graph. Plot the graph and remember, whatever the y axis, that's your range. Now, let's take this off channel a little bit. I mean, off channel means uh, we look at another aspect. What if I have another graph like this? Okay, so this one you should know. Uh, one of them going to be lawn graph. One of them going to be exponential graph. So you know there is one graph will look like this. Okay. So, a lot of students, after I teach that, they will think, ah, sir, so this one is 5, huh? this is the, I mean, this is going to be my range. Take note, this is one of the lawn or exponential graph. For this graph, you must take note of the asymptote because this point is actually the intercept point. But this graph will continue to grow until one extent it will settle down. So, where it settles down, also commonly known as asymptote, that is your range of value. That means my graph will be for my asymptotes and below anything above the asymptote we won't make it into my range so that's how you determine your range things become very easy and smooth even exponential you can do the same let's talk about quadra uh, trigonometric graph in trigonometric graph also you can do the same thing you see i'll explain to you in trigonometric graph how we can do it trigonometric graph means let's say you got a sine graph okay sine sine x uh, your peak value is one low value is negative one you can write okay you can write your range fx is going to be between one to negative one so remember range is the value in your y-axis that is what's your limit on your graph of course you want to do your way go ahead okay no problem if you're not sure whether your way is approved or not of course in class you can tell me okay we can discuss together all right that's all about uh, I want to talk about function so you must know how to find inverse then using this notation is very crucial Okay, how you write down the particular notation and one more important thing in function they'll give you fx for example huh, they give you sine x then on the side they will say x not equals to 4 this value is known as your domain take note whatever condition they give you right after the question that is known as your domain okay that's not your range that is known as your domain so pretty much like that then what else i miss on function let me think i think that's all oh yeah I haven't covered with you guys this one this is my general rule another one rule i tell you must remember in your fx function your range see uh, in your fx function your range eh? okay your fx function your range when you inverse that same function your range will become your domain for the inverse same thing for your domain in the function when you reverse that domain will become your range so in some question in passe they will ask you find inverse then after finding inverse they'll ask you to go and find what we call that the uh 
the range so how you can do you can use this uh this technique over here okay you can just use the domain and then you convert to range so that is pretty much about that then you should know explain i mean this one you know you should need to know how to explain why that function has an inverse or not i think we have learned this before why the function has an inverse or not inverse it depends on the relationship usually only one to one has an inverse so this one also another controversial statement so then we say, sir, but I thought any function is I can find inverse what? Yes, you can find the equation, but we don't know whether that function that in that that after you reverse, it has an inverse or not. We don't know. So to be inverse, this condition must be satisfied. It must be one to one relationship. If it's not one to one, it doesn't have a fun inverse. Okay, then um, you see here. Here also they already highlight for you guys. With I'll highlight for this. You find the inverse of one to one function. And form composite function. So you need to know how to find fgx, gfx, and also sketch graph. Okay, so pretty much that's about function. Uh, that's the common question that you will see in your examination as well. Now, let's go with the next chapter: quadratic function. So in quadratic function, I'll highlight for you. You need to know it's a maximum or minimum graph. That's number one you should know. And you know how we can get maximum and minimum graph through completing the square. If you don't complete the square, you will never know your maximum and minimum of course some students they have some other technique uh, of course you can check with me or you can check with miss catherine or anyone that is available in the school whether that method is appro uh, approved or not okay please check with your teacher before using you don't want to use a method that you know it's not approached by cambridge even though it's correct but i'm not saying that cambridge is being mean or they don't they want to punish you simply no they have their objective that they want to test that is why they don't allow certain method Okay, it's not that you are wrong or you are smart or what. It's just that they have their objective. They want you to master this technique, so you must follow. That's all. Okay, it's not about the uh, ego kind of thing or what. Okay, so to get the plot or graph, you must know how to do completing the square. Okay, completing the square is very crucial. I have a formula, and I think I'll share with you guys here. My formula of completing the square will be this formula. It works all the time. Okay, it's very fast and accurate. But if you don't want to use this, you can use your method. Go ahead. Then you should know the shape of the graph. Maximum graph is maximum graph is like this. Minimum graph is like this. You should know. Then uh, yeah, you see they say uh, find the maximum using by any method. That means completing the square is not the only method. You can use other appropriate method as you feel. But check with the school first. Now use maximum minimum to sketch. Like yep, like I said, you must use that maximum minimum value to sketch. Know the condition. For f x equals to zero, this one, this part here, guys, with uh, this bullet here, they're talking about determinant. Not sure whether you remember or not. Determinant means b square minus four ac equals to zero. So you must know b square minus four ac. Um, wait, let me just get a good highlighter color. Huh? So two real root equal root and no real root. Then you have one more thing. Okay, one more thing. Uh, does not have equal root. Something like that. I forgot already. So four rules you must remember. Okay. Two real root means it's more than zero. Equal root means equal. No real root means less than zero. So all this determinant kind of thing you should know. And then uh, related to condition, related to condition, so you know intersect at a given curve means more than zero. Tangent means equal zero. Not intersect means less than zero. So these are the kind of thing that you should know in quadratic function. But usually this chapter, if you notice them, huh, it's it has been a while since they asked you to sketch a graph or complete the square. Uh, the most standard practice what they do is they'll uh, they'll give you two equation. It has an unknown inside like k or whatsoever. Then they'll ask you. They'll say, okay, this equation is tangent to the curve. So you need to use lah uh, either one of the b square minus four ac uh, condition. Okay, so be very careful with that kind of kind of thing. Now we'll go with the next chapter, which is equation inequality and graph. Okay, let's talk about this in detail. Uh, for equation inequality, I've told you guys before, and I'm going to tell again. There are a lot, plenty of method. Okay, especially for modulus. One way, let's say I have a question that is two x plus one. Okay, let's say um, let's say two x plus one, um, less than probably modulus two x minus one, and they only solve this. So there's two way you can do this. One way, you split into positive and negative. Another way, you just square them up. Okay, you just square them up, and you should get the answer. But I will advise you to consider the square method. I think all the classes I have explained before, and because this is a seminar, I'm going to explain again. I have tried this method, but in one question, I surprisingly I use this method. I cannot get the answer. 
and I've been thinking since then until today I cannot get a valid reason therefore I use this method I get the answer so I will tell you guys to play safe you can consider using this of course quadratic is not a favorable kind of thing to student because you need to expand and do a lot of tasks but I think you can consider this method it's very good and beneficial okay now the next one they ask you solve algebraically inequality type like I said please remember this is another problem when you guys solve you tend to don't show the step what step I'm talking about either number line or graphical method okay you must show how you get your inequality you can't just assume the teacher or the examiner know uh, let's say graphical method means you will draw your graph after draw your graph here will be positive positive negative then you'll shade based on your inequality or you will draw a number line like this okay then you'll put the dot here then you'll put the dot here plus plus kind of thing so these are all the stuff that I think you should know okay and you must show the step even though they didn't tell even though you claim that you didn't see the marking scheme my advice just show okay this is your final goal you don't want to miss your opportunity to get an A or whatever desire mark that you have planned okay then sketch a polynomial graph you must know how to sketch a polynomial graph and solve the cubic so in this chapter in this chapter as a general remark I can say 90% of the time the test on the modulus only very rarely they test on the cubic but you should know how to draw a cubic graph and also extract certain information from the cubic graph alone <coughs> okay next question indices and cert okay indices and cert very important you must know rules of indices such as uh, a plus sorry I mean what I was saying a power 2 dot a power 3 you must know when they are multiply we will sum them up and then when they are divide a power 2 over a power 3 when divide we will minus them so these are the basic rule you should know in indices and listen carefully this rule applies for what we call that applies for exponential as well because wait I want to check something oh yeah exponential is coming in the next part okay never mind I'll just explain here okay exponential the way to solve exponential we regard it as a indices form but long we regard as a function okay take note huh? exponential usually will solve using indices rule but for long we will solve using the logarithmic rule okay so that's one thing that you should know now this one they say perform simple operations so you need to know how to solve indices another one is using substitution method I think the most recent paper that we did uh, even your mock one or what I know mistaken they will give you they will tell you y equals to x power 1 over 3 so you need to utilize this but if let's say they didn't give you you can declare okay you can declare let that whatever that thing is okay whatever the thing is equals to some alphabet if you find it hard to factorize to solve it you can declare yourself a certain alphabet but you must write there let then for the cert form very important I know the modern calculator can give you the answer straight but if you do that you'll get straight away zero marks okay you must show the steps that's why they are testing your cert knowledge you must show the cert form and remember any question involving cert question cert question me is fully focused on cert you must live in the most rationalized form rationalized form means this is not rationalized huh? please take note this is definitely not rationalized rationalized means we must not have a cert at the bottom the cert must be on top like this okay it must be like this this is what known as the rationalized rationalized form okay so please take note in this chapter only these are the I would say the major stand up point you should know right okay now factors and polynomial factors and polynomial what you should know is uh, the most common one which is when they say that term okay when they say uh, 2x minus 1 is a factor okay that's already ringing some bell when you see it's a factor that means x equals to 1 over 2 when you substitute or perform long division it won't give you remainder it's a perfect factor okay that's very important then solve cubic equation or you know solving cubic equation can be very challenging some students tend to resort to calculator but I said before you cannot cheat like that okay you must show how you find so the only commonly known method is trial and error so this trial and error you can pick any value from 2 to negative 2 usually the value will be in this range but what if it's not in the range you got another way you take your cubic equation like this ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus t you perform long division okay to bring down to a more simpler way 
but to do that of course you must get your factor if they didn't give you the factor how you gonna do okay so that's why what i said there are a, there are two ways one you can use trial and error another one you can use the long division method to solve this as well okay now i go with the next one simultaneous equation i know you talk a lot okay it's only two way elimination or substitution you can figure out that by yourself easily okay without any problem so pretty much like that now i'll go with the next part which is logarithmic and exponential function so like i said earlier exponential function usually will use indices law but for logarithmic or ln it's the same rule okay so you must know the rules of logarithmic and exponential there are difference between them so treat exponential as indices rule treat ln as a logarithmic rule then this is the common thing students ask me then sir if let's say i want to solve a question can i use ln or not for me personally i like to use ln rather than log because why log i have a base and i whenever i do any shifting i need to consider the base but for ln it's like a open world it's like gta you know i don't need to consider anyone i can just do whatever i want that is why i personally prefer ln over log okay but it's your choice huh? it's your choice and of course what's the examiner's need you have to consider that factors as well okay so you need to know the rule you need to know the rule and then you need to know the laws and then solve the equation oh of course changing the base of a logarithm this is similar like what i told just now do not assume and do okay the basic rule you have learned in your atmes for now is that you must convert it to base 10 okay so base 10 got two way of writing one they will write like this log with base 10 another one is lg so lg also self understood which is uh, what we call that base of 10 okay so please take note on those kind of thing i think i already explained about log and exponential log and exponential as you see in your past year normally they will do two indices they as you extract the power and do sim- simultaneous or in some rare occasion they will up level a bit which is they will ask you to you know solve the equation or combine or something it depends in some occasion they might combine with co- coordinate geometry where you know you need to find a gradient and 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 those kind of things lah okay so it depends on the situation but based on our our list here you should know this kind of basic thing okay next one straight line graph okay straight line graph i'm going to write a series of formula one you should know is your uh what we call that computing your gradient you'll be surprised some students still do know okay and then another one formula you should know is is already written here y equals to mx plus c and these are the common formula that i'll use y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1 okay this is a very common one so of course student ask me so why you use this compared to this my answer is simple if i do this i need to do a hassle step to find the c but if i use this formula when i solve itself i get the c so there is no need for you to go think oh i finished this ready now i go find c no need one like you use one stone to hit to hit two but something like that the story over here okay so i use this formula i can get the c straight and then uh, this one means you need to find the c so double work you need to know this formula you need to know this formula then another one important thing that i think you guys should know is this one which is the m1 times m2 equals to negative 1 this one only applicable for perpendicular so perpendicular have several keywords one is known as tangent <laughs> a hey, no 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 tangent is not okay one is known as normal line and another one i think yeah normal line now okay usually they just tell you normal line so whenever you see the keyword either normal or perpendicular that means you need to use this formula already, okay parallel is easy on the contrary parallel is easy on the contrary parallel means m1 equals to m2 that's all you need to know okay So the rest in this chapter I think is not hard it's about your mindset remember just now we see the Cambridge learner thing it's about your creativity you need to know when and how you want to tackle like if I want to find this coordinate who is the intercept who I can declare zero who I cannot declare zero how can I use the gradient to benefit me how can I use this it's all your creativity okay so you can see here they say transform given relationship in this form okay this is a addition statement I put there one because it's a very common commonly repeating question throughout your past year so that one they say transform means they'll give you probably in a equation like log y equals to 1 x square i think this one we did this question in a in october november paper okay so similar concept but you must know how you're going to convert that back to 
this particular equation. So usually they'll do what you know they'll give you the equation in terms of log, then after that they ask you to convert to indices. So for that you must solve this problem first. If this problem is not sort sort out, you're gonna struggle at here. Okay, so while I discuss, I hope you can take note. Okay, so to solve this problem, you must settle this first. If you don't settle this, you won't be able to solve this problem. That's number one. You must take note. Then know and use the law of logarithmic this one and solve the equation. I think this one I told already. The solving equation, please do not use that what I show you any anymore. I mean, not to say anymore, at least for your IG. After that, for the study on use, go ahead. Okay, but at least for IG, please don't use that method. Okay. Now, I think, eh, I got mixed up already. Yeah, I, I actually went to the this one already. Sorry, guys, I got mixed up already. So, never mind. The point is, you need to know that. Then, solve equation involving midpoint and length of a line. I didn't discuss with you guys the formula for length of line. Length of line is actually uh, x minus x, x1, x minus x, I mean, x1 minus x2, sorry. Okay, to find the length of a particular thing, huh? it's x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square. I don't know you guys can see, you know, actually this formula is formed on the very basis of trigonom uh, what we call that, Pythagoras. This formula is made from Pythagoras, okay? So you must remember, we are subtracting two x value and two y value, we square them up and then you square root, you should get the answer. So this is actually exactly Pythagoras because if you shift the square root there, it's going to be distance square. Okay, so you must know this formula. Then midpoint, I think I don't need to talk. That's one of the basic one. Midpoint, all you got to do is just plus x x dy two plus y y dy two. Okay, then let's go on with the next one. Circular measure. This one circular measure. I think I already explained the beginning of the lesson itself. So I think I reiterate one more time. Circular measure. You must know s s equals to r theta. Then area equals to one over two r squared theta. And you must know to find the length of a chord as well. 102 AB sin C. So these are the most three commonly tested formula in your circular measure. But of course, in rare, rare occasion, they'll ask you to include tangent, sine, and cosine or Pythagoras. Okay? But that one all is not, comp I mean, that one all they don't have to tell you, but they can just do it because it's in the syllabus update this I'll see this is all problem involving arc length and sector area, including knowledge and use of the radian measure. Uh, this is not the important thing. In circular measure, all the formulas must be in radian. Okay, that means when you do any question related to circular measure, first thing you take your calculator, convert your calculator to radian. If you fail to do so, you will pay a big price for that. <laughs> okay, so take note, you must know, of course, if let's say they actually show manual calculation, you should know. Probably I can show one sample. I always tell my student, remember this, the formula is always, if I want to convert degree to radian, I must divide by degree first, then only I can convert to radian. If I want to convert from radian to degree, so I must divide by radian first, then only I times by degree. So that's the whole idea. So remember, when you are in transition from one unit to another unit, you must cancel off the unit first. We will cancel out the unit, how are you going to you know, transfer? So that's why I, I emphasize, just remember that you first step, you need to do what? transfer the unit first. So to transfer the unit, what we do, we cancel them off by dividing by 180 or pi, depending on what the question was saying. So pretty much like that, circular measure is one of the easiest questions. I know for the mock one, it wasn't easy. Okay, But anyhow, for, you know, in further study, circular measure, usually they play with these two rules only. They won't go any far from that. So now with that, uh, we will go with trigonometry. Okay, so before I start with trigonometry, Okay, guys, so we have to continue from trigonometry. Now, in trigonometry, like what they mentioned in here, you need to know all the six trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and also cotangent. These are the things that you should know. On top of that, you must understand the concept of amplitude, pre -period, periodicity, that means period, relationship between graph of related trigonometry, like for example, sine and two, sine 2x. Two you must know what's the relationship. Sine x means we're talking about a single cycle. Give me a second sine x means we talk about single cycle fits inside the usual 360 degree whereas sine 2x that means double cycle also same objective but fits inside the 360 that's the concept of course you must know what is secant secant means one over cos cosecant means one over sine and cotangent means tangent also known as sine over cos these are the basic thing you should know and on top of that you must know how to actually sketch the 
trigonometric graph like for example here you got a cos b x and this but the idea is that you should know to who is the amplitude and who is the period and how you know you shift the graph on top and bottom like let me just highlight for you over here to know which one go on top and bottom usually this front value will determine your amplitude the one in front will determine your amplitude the one in the back here that will decide whether your graph shift towards up or shift towards down and your period will be decided by this b constant over there but of course you need to take 360 divide you need to know what's the difference of amplitude amplitude means the limit of the graph like i talked in the function period means in one 360 how many cycle is going to be inside that those kind of thing then you should know that a is a positive integer b is simple fractional integer it can be anything because like i said b is a the period and uh, c is an integer why a and c must be integer because like i said it will determine your your graphs limit okay so it can determine that means here is one and one like for a default if i start with sine or oh should wait if i start with two sine x that means my starting point is going to be my peak value which is also known as my amplitude this is going to be two this is going to be two therefore my graph like that and then if i plus one this entire graph here will shift up by one level that means if shift up by one level it should become similar to this concept over here if we start from here and here go back that so this is three this is zero because it shift up by one sorry it should be negative one my bad Wait, let me just draw because shift up by one not two i went and assume it's two sorry graph is very crucial it's confirm will come out i mean not to say confirm will come out but the rate for it to appear is very high now you want to shift up then you just shift up start from here it goes here a bit and then it go up a bit so that's the graph after being shifted by one towards up so you must know how to sketch the graph you should know uh, who's the amplitude who's the frequency this kind of thing then you also should know how to use this relationship to solve a trigonometric function like for sine cosine tangent solve symmetry prove simple trigonometric identity okay so we're going to enter next chapter but before I enter next chapter i think i should disclose a little bit on trigonometry in trigonometry when we solve equation you must be very careful what i mean by very careful we have done a lot of pass here. in some pass if you notice they will put the limit like this purposely not to say like that they will they, the equation can be anything but they'll put the limit by pi or in some situation um they will put zero and then they'll put x by you know maybe pi over two so whenever you want to solve a equation with this kind of domain you want to check whether they already exceeded certain cycle or not what i mean by certain cycle let's say i have sine 3x but then your domain is x so my advice for you i think throughout my lesson with you guys i always tell you whenever you have or you encounter this kind of problem directly do what multiply by three first okay multiply by three first find your quadrant then you divide by three if you don't do that the tendency for you to miss a certain value is extremely high so these are the question you need to take note on top of that there's another one question that i also discussed with you guys earlier let's say i have a function like this sine x over cos x i think we have explained to you before over one over sine x and then i've asked you guys earlier can i like something cancel off this let's say they ask you to solve not proof proving yes you can cancel but when they ask you to solve you cannot cancel two different function because like i said this is a function not an algebra function means when you cancel you the tendency for you to miss a certain solution is very high so don't do this mistake you cannot cancel any function if they ask you to solve the equation proving is different okay but solving you have to be careful make sure it's in your read within your domain and of course when you want to solve check whether your domain is in degree leave your answer in degree if it's in radian leave your answer in radian so please obey what was provided to you in the exam okay don't simply whack and go so in trigonometry sketching graph you must know how to determine period cycle amplitude you must know how to solve trigonometric function you must know how to prove the trigonometric function you should know and also there's some element where you must be careful with this kind of thing like i said it's sine 3x but then the domain is not 3x the domain is x instead so for this kind of solution all you must be more extra careful where you modify first fine only then you divide and do the necessary calculation okay so with that i think we can wrap up with trigonometry and of course don't forget the domain you know the the chart 
I'm just going to draw the chart here. It's up to you, whatever word you want to use, go ahead. Uh, add sugar to coffee, okay? Wait, just give me a second. You can use whatever, add sugar to coffee. Remember the formula, if it's pi, here is pi minus base angle. This is pi plus base angle. This is going to be 2 pi minus base angle. Then it's just, this is just uh, pi over there. Now, for let's say if your angle is in degree, then your formula will be slightly different, which is still add sugar to coffee or all trust Cambridge or anything, whichever you prefer. This one will be 180 minus base angle. This one will be 180 plus base angle. This one is going to be not 2 pi, sorry, this is going to be 360 minus base angle, and this is base angle. So this chart is very crucial. You must know this chart, um, how you decide. So like I always tell you guys, I don't know how uh, some of you solve, some of you might have your own way of doing, but I always tell my students that when you want to solve, let's say when you solve, um, you get like this sine x equals to negative 1 over 2. I always tell them, ignore the negative when you want to find the base angle. Please ignore the negative whenever you want to find the base angle. You just do your calculation first. Later on only, you decide. Like now this is negative, isn't it? So you go and find sine is negative in which quadrant? This two quadrant. Then only you solve it. So in the process of obtaining your base angle, no need to press the negative inside. Just continue and continue and find your base angle first. Now, let's go with the next chapter. I think that's it about trigonometry. I can kind of wrap it up. Okay, we'll go with the next one. Now, for permutation and combination, I think throughout the time, I have teach you guys certain keyword, but keyword is not really that matter. It's more the concept of understanding it. Now, I'm just going to explain. I've told you guys before how you decide whether you use NCR or NPR. If you want to use NCR, look for the word select or choose. Usually, not to say look for the keyword, look for the situation where it talks about select or choose or order does not matter then you can decide to use combination but if they want to order a specific order that means when you arrange the book it must be the specific order when you arrange this material it must be the specific order for that kind of situation we will use permutation that one usually the keyword is arrange order this kind of keyword they will give you in that question or as long the concept talks about arrange order use permutation that's all. Mm, the other situation is factorial, but factorial you can use. I'm not a fan of factorial, but factorial, one thing good about factorial is it helps you to eliminate repetitive condition. Like some question, they'll say, okay, I only can use this value one time. I don't need to repeat again. That kind of situation, you can consider to use permutation. Now, in this chapter, you must know, distinguish between permutation and, and combination, as I said earlier. You need to know when to use factorial, as I mentioned answer problem and arrangement in the class i think when i teach with you guys i always illustrate i always draw things out and then i tell you this is a situation this is how you can do you can actually consider to draw as well okay for me i will draw because for me visual works better than just words so it's up to your preference if you think you can do it without drawing go ahead some students don't like to draw some students just like to do it and up to you okay so that's permutation and combination now we'll talk about series. In series, I'll give you a series of formula. Okay, in this series of formula, you need to know the huge difference. One is we call arithmetic, and another one we call geometric. The difference between these two, nothing. I mean, not to say nothing much. Sorry, wrong keyword. They have a big difference. Arithmetic is usually deal with any series that involve addition or subtraction from one and subsequent value. For geometry when it involves multiplication or division between one and the other subsequent value. Take note, arithmetic, addition, subtraction. Geometry, multiplication, division, very important. And they have a set of totally different formula to talk about. Now, I'm just going to plus one blank space here so I can explain a little bit detail. Now, in arithmetic, this is arithmetic. We have few formula. One is to find the Tn. If you want to find the Tn for arithmetic, the formula is A plus N minus 1 donkey. You should know D stands for the common difference. Now, this one, you guys did a mistake in the mock one, whereby I think there is one series involving logarithmic sequence. You're supposed to write 
obtain the comma difference you just write down without showing the step that's not acceptable when they ask you to find comma difference you must show that you take one value minus the subsequent value that's how you get the comma difference writing out the value doesn't make cut even though it's one mark question don't tell and never tell i'm telling you guys today now this formula we used to find the n term that means the fifth term the sixth term the seventh term specifically therefore d is known as the common difference a is the first value of your sequence take note the first value of your sequence and it's just the term number term number six term number seven term number eight or so and forth the same comparison we will look in the geometry function i mean geometry series sorry they have the same formula the n term formula but it's a r n minus one now a lot of students will be concerned what is r r is the common ratio common ratio means in one series they'll have a fixed ratio that means either the one value to the next subsequent value is multiple of two or multiple of three or so and forth now you have to show how you find if they ask you to find a is still the same the first term of the sequence then we have another formula which talk about the sum for this the sum formula is a little bit long it's n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1 d now you can see all the alphabet is the same just that the structure is slightly different you can know that d is the common difference the a is the first value the n is the term so sum means what let's say i have a 10 series and i want to plus all the value you can't be adding one by one you can just use the summation of the first 10 value provided the series have a common different if they don't have common different use the value no point it's pointless for geometry function we have a bracket r n minus one give me a second over r minus one if you notice i think in your textbook it'll give you two sets of formula one for r n minus one and then one is another one is one minus d reverse but the concept is because they say you know use this formula when ratio is more than one less than one doesn't matter you can use one formula both application because why whatever you do here is going to affect down so it's okay all right but if you want to memorize both you can go ahead that's one thing about common ratio then this is special okay this formula is special only for geometry function wait my disease started i can't write okay it's a over one minus r this formula is known as sum of infinity now why for aromatic we don't have but for geometry we have because you see for a sequence to grow if you keep adding a sequence consistently you keep adding consistently for a period of time and the same series you multiply consistently for the same period of time obviously the one that is multiplied is going to grow faster compared to the addition that is why for addition and division we have a thing called sum of infinity because the capability to increase to infinity is much faster than aromatic so that is why we have this sum of infinity means we can say the value is going to shoot up to a predefined time we don't i mean undefined time so we want to know at infinity what happens so that is when we use sum to the infinity now that's all about this this series but on top of that we have another one short one which you should know the binomial binomial has been long for quite some time but aromatic in geometry i think was introduced last year the batch previously they had it so you guys are the second batch who's sitting for this one previously they never introduced yet in the syllabus now binomial has been there long of course in binomial they got another one thing called pascal but if you notice in here like i said this this document was extracted from the cambridge website they never mentioned anything about pascal so you can know pascal it's just a knowledge for you to know but they won't be testing you out okay in in throughout my my experience during past year i never see them test any student on pascal before but it's important to know okay it has a good foundation to build the binomial sequence then you must know binomial sequence i think you guys can refer to the formula or you can do my way which i told you last time i'll just start off with you know 10 c whatever here and here the power when you add must equals to 10 but usually one of them will equals to down there you can use this method also if you want okay that's binomial extracting coefficient you should know throughout my marking of the mock one paper i noticed no one has problem on this so you should know the common pattern they will ask you to find for a sequence the first three term second part they'll ask you to find a coefficient for a specific uh, thing and then aromatic geometry of course it depends like for mock one i give you the logarithmic and in the past they had give you currency a lot of things okay it depends now with that i think we'll go with the next chapter vector 
for vector to be honest there's nothing much for us to talk even when i teach you guys in the class as i've told you vector require good creativity it requires a very good and strong creativity you must know what is column vector and vector notation column vector means is in look in the matrix form like this like this here vector notation means is just in the ij form another one thing you must remember in vector your i is your uh what we call the i is your y axis and j is your x axis you must know this thing i'm not sure one of that but it's not really important but i think you should take note lah okay please take note that then know the the know and use position vector and unit vectors i think about this i have talked countless time some of you prefer to use you know finding the vector using the addition method i have taught using the minus method that means if i want to find ab you look for where your starting point is then you can put ob minus oa it's your preference whichever method you want to use next we have finding the magnitude you must know how to find magnitude and unit vector very important magnitude is known like this magnitude is basically pythagoras you get the i component square plus the j component square whereas for unit vector is slightly different unit vector is 1 over the magnitude itself so please be careful on this kind of little little details that you should take note okay then you need to compose and resolve velocity uh this one you remember the velocity part we talk about the formula where let me just explain to you they will talk to you about a uh, position vector relative to something that i told you here we'll put our position vector plus time and then here we'll put our velocity but sometimes they won't give you the velocity right away they'll give you the speed so when get speed you must find the velocity so remember i told you you need to do find the scale factor then the scale factor multiplied by the speed you will get the velocity so this are the kind of thing that you should know okay compose and resolve velocity so velocity we're talking about this equation the front part is not important but the idea is you should know that um, there's a vector i mean it's not really position vector it's more to about relative factor i would say a relative vector here is where your position vector will be not op position vector plus a time here will be your velocity that's the whole idea you should know this equation you have seen in in throughout when we discuss pasi i believe we have encountered this kind of question a lot now with that i think we'll enter with our final chapter which is differentiation and integration one of the most biggest chapter in your entire atmats differentiation and integration are tied to each other that concept you must get it right because that concept we will use in integration remember there's one part there so you differentiate first then ask you use the part a to solve part b something like that so you must be able to understand that differentiation and integration are complement to each other and then in differentiation there are few ways one we will put differential or we put f prime like you can see here f prime okay so f prime also indicate is a differential or f double prime is double differential you must understand the idea of derived function derived function is known as the gradient function you must know that that means whenever i find dy dx that is my gradient but take note gradient of tangent by default you don't need to think a lot is no any sophisticated formula when you perform dy dx that dy dx is your gradient of tangent and you see they have they said use the derivative of standard okay that means you need to know how to differentiate sin cosine tangent exponential ln you must know how to use this in whatever way that means multiple sum composite quotient rule product rule if this function is in that particular equation then differentiate product and quotient as i mentioned earlier apply differentiation to gradient tangent normal stationary in this keyword you should know normal means we are talking about perpendicular please take note normal is per spelling error perpendicular this one stationary point you should be able to link dy dx equals to 0 rate of change the word when you see rate that means whatever on top divide by dt small approximation means delta y over delta x bit approximately same with dy over dx this is small approximation practical maximum minimum that means we need to perform second differential to prove whether it's a maximum or minimum so remember when you are required to do second differential when they ask you to prove whether that value or that function has a maximum or minimum that means you don't know whether that point is a maximum or minimum for that kind of situation we will do second differential otherwise you don't have to do that okay so take note of that 
then understand integration like i mentioned already understand integration i already told earlier integrate sum of term you should know that means 1 over x when you integrate they become ln x and when you integrate 1 over ax plus b what it should become you should know that evaluate definite apply differentiation to kinematics okay this one i think i'll explain it a bit kinematics part you should be careful i always teach you guys as sva as we go down from one level we should differentiate them you should differentiate it as we go up from one level you should perform your integration so that's the whole idea of kinematics then in kinematics you must know when you differentiate it's not a problem but when you integrate you plus c that's where your problem so you should know when you integrate from acceleration to v when you got c how you find the c you let a zero or you let displacement zero you should know that and also when you integrate from velocity to displacement you should know who you need to let zero like for that one is easy v zero t zero something like that to solve the c value so c value you cannot discard just like that it's important for you to find the c value okay so take note on uh, those kind of uh, tiny tiny little detail that i think you should pay attention to okay so with that um i think i'm going to proceed with the next part ready okay so we're going to gear up for our next part okay <clears throat> now in our next part i think i already explained to you guys all the detail on the topic level what you should know what you should expect what is the thing all i already explained now in this seminar we'll go to the next part the next part is where we talk in detail about the paper level okay so i think i already explained this one earlier it's a repeated one just ignore okay but then there's some detail there uh this is compulsory you have to take paper one and paper two you can't avoid electronic calculator needed okay this is the crucial one each paper include the formula list so each paper will include the formula list i think this is one common question that student asked me sir will the formula list be included yes answering your question formula list will be included inside both paper but what are the formulas going to include it okay this is the latest list that i extracted from cambridge website these are the set of formula that will be included other than this they won't include okay so take note so you need to see what are the formulas here whether they'll be relevant for you or not if it's not going to be relevant then it's time for you to buckle up and go and do what memorize the formula or understand the formula so you can see that they'll give you the basic quadratic binomial aromatic progression but you know the sum geometry trigonometry a very basic one very basic trigonometry i would say that's it that's the only formula they give you if you notice now that's why i say this is the list of updated formula that you will see in your igcc examination other than that no you're not going to see okay so please don't ask me this question again after watch the seminar you should know if the formula that you use a lot is not listed in here then you have to do your own revision on that part okay so there are a lot other formula like indices and then cubic um what we call that polynomial uh gradient perpendicular equation of straight line circular measure see circular measure is not included conversion from radian to degree degree to radian differentiation rate of change small approximation integration kinematics a lot okay when we talk about formula it can keep go on and on and on and on okay so be careful on that part now remember just now i talked to you about the words that you should know okay so now i am going to explain about the words okay so in the words what you should know okay there are a few keywords that i think uh it's crucial for you guys to know okay so let's look at it first we have one calculate so when they say calculate work out from given facts that means you must you can use calculator you don't know, need to show step but like i say just show the step okay for the sake of showing them just show you never know when the fate will turn against you so my advice just show it okay next one they ask you to describe so describe is state the points of a topic or character so describe is you just need to explain okay just explain what is it what is it why it, it's it doesn't have a velocity why it doesn't has an acceleration why why that function doesn't have an inverse or why that cubic doesn't have an inverse so just explain determine means determine means you need to prove determine means like determine whether this is a maximum or minimum so you need to show with evidence explain explain same like describe give okay this is the most important plot and sketch plot and sketch you must use pencil please don't do anything using pen right you see they already say make a simple free and so no accuracy level needed just use a pencil and sketch the graph normally this one will come out when they ask you to sketch 
uh, lawn graph, exponential graph, cosine graph, sine graph, this kind of thing. Just use but show the scale where your you know where your first cycle end, when your second cycle end, and what is your amplitude. You must show that basic things. State means explain clear term, verify. It's this one is the maximum minimum book card. So the I I'll just go through the main keyword, okay? But all this keyword definitely will rotate, 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 and come out in your exam paper. But the most important one, I think I have stated out. Now we will go with the last slide for today in our seminar, which is after the exam. Now after the exam, also I think I will talk in the beginning, which is the grading, the reporting. You should know what is all this thing about. Uh, you know result pending okay whatsoever lah hmm? but you should know now since we're done here i think it's important for us to spend a bit time on time management this is very important whenever i teach my students i always tell them the same thing okay you see um your paper one paper one they give you uh two hour two hour which is equivalent to 120 minute paper one is 80 mark paper two is just the same Okay, paper 2, also same 80 mark, 2 hour, equivalent to 120 minutes. Now, why I want to talk about time management? Because time management can help you to not waste time on a question that is going to take too long time. So, you can reserve it later on. My advice for you guys, you see, you set this goal. You can consider you don't want to do it's okay. You want to do also, it's good for you. You can tell yourself that. Since it's 80 mark, I'm going to give 1 mark 1 minute. So for 80 mark, it's going to be 80 minute, isn't it? So 80 minute, huh? you're going to give 80 minute for 80 marks. Now 120 minus 80, you have at least surplus, plus minus 40 minute. So what you can do is, every question, that means if it's a 3 mark question, spend three minutes of course it's not easy like, okay not easy that you know every time you're going to look okay look at the watch or oh, three minutes relax no no it's not practical but what you can do you can just when when whenever you feel that you are spending slightly longer time than usual you start to time yourself that means you time yourself be disciplined you feel this question very time yourself okay this question is six mark i'm going to give six mark if within i mean six minutes if within the six minute i can't get the answer then i just walk away and finish the rest secure my mark then i come back to this question because like i said you got surplus of 40 minutes so don't waste your time paper one and paper two is the same this technique i have teached before actually to me was taught to me by miss Catherine, and i personally have uh, tried this method it works very well you can consider this if you don't want to so okay like i said it's not practical to always look at your watch or your wrist or you know the clock or whatsoever but i think it's a very good kind of thing for you to you know manage your time huh? you can consider using this method on top of that what else i want to say on the seminar i think nothing much okay i don't want to drag too long unnecessarily okay by the way there's another video that will be done i mean i hopefully i'll get it done by then which is this is the seminar video seminar video we only focus on the at maths then there's another video which talk about maths clinic okay maths clinic i mean at maths clinic I, i'm not sure what's the duration but that one I will cover on the common question based on your mock one and T1. Which are the question you guys commonly make mistake? I'll get you know some set and I'll discuss in detail like how you can avoid doing this mistake, what you could do to make it better. This kind of little little things we will explore a lot on that. Okay, so pretty much like that. But before I wrap up, I think I should just spend a little bit time, just a little bit time on a few component. Huh? Okay, so just now I was talking about lawn lawn one right okay so for the lawn one let's just explore a little bit i think this one i have told to you guys in the class itself a mock one and now i'm telling again so please show every single step do not miss your step it's very 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 crucial okay of course you will tell me like okay one mark why i should show many like i said you never know how the fate will turn against you okay so it's best to stay safe okay oh yeah now i remember what i want to say when one specific chapter question Let's talk about one specific. I'll just go through to see whether I miss something, okay? Because I think I've go through quite thoroughly. But in case I miss something, let me just see. Um, here I already explained most of it. And this this basic one, I think I already explained a lot. I already tell you do long division. You do this and equation. I already show how to draw. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about this. Okay, one thing in inequality. Let's say they ask you to draw a modulus graph or inequality graph. How do you draw an inequality graph? My advice always, 
remove the modulus that means let's say i have y equals to modulus for c i have a graph like that i'm required to plot x minus 2 and x minus 3 this graph but it has a modulus my advice first what you do you get your poi that means point of intersection and since this is a quadratic graph you need to get your maximum or minimum value this is definitely a minimum get the point plot the graph first okay like for this uh, for example okay it's not exactly going to be the same but i'm just doing uh, estimation so it's going to be two and three my graph roughly is going to look like that okay so you see when i draw i'll just draw by ignoring the modulus after that only towards the end i will reflect on top so when i reflect on top student usually ask me so what happened to the older one should i leave it or erase you can make it to become dotted if you want to okay you can make it to become dotted or i mean i'll advise you make it dotted i don't leave it solid because the examiner might be confused what is your final answer so you just convert it to become dotted graph there that should make it to the cut okay just make it to become dotted very simple and straightforward so for modulus graph like i said draw the graph get the point by ignoring the modulus first then only towards the end what you can do is you just uh, what we call that perform your usual thing which is uh, flip it up so that is about this thing lah. i think i already spoke a lot about this next one indices and said i think nothing much polynomials simultaneous equation nope okay simultaneous equation you must be careful usually simultaneous equation they will merge a lot with uh, determinant which is this one the b square minus 4 ac you know equals zero blah 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 okay usually they will tie a lot with this this chapter so you must be careful you must know your rules who is more than zero who is less than zero who is equal to zero you should know that then for logarithmic and exponential function i think i have spoke what is needed straight line graph i have shown circular measure i've shown trigonometry then permutation series yeah pretty much like that okay so another one thing that i think we can discuss about will be wait, let me just add one 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 empty page here another one thing is about how actually you decide how many steps you need to show for a mark you know if the question is three mark for say is three mark that means the step not to say it should be three step but three important steps should be demonstrated you can't just cut it short like that okay you must understand or assess yourself we have done a lot of passive question so i don't spend that time discussing in the seminar so we keep the seminar more detail uh, more on answering technique and those kind of things so like i said if it's a three mark you must show a very three important step that is relevant to the objective of the question and if it's a six mark then you should show a six step if you are lacking by six step try to see maybe one step can fit in few marks for an example we talk of a differentiation let's say i have this kind of function exponential 2x plus exponential negative 3x and they want you to differentiate this function and they said it's a uh, for an example huh, three marks for an example okay so no this question cannot be three mark this question should be two mark so if this question is two mark you see how first we differentiate when i differentiate i'm going to get exponential 2x over 2 plus exponential negative 3x over negative 3 now how they will give you the mark you see this is an important step because you differentiate on the left hand side then this is an important step because you differentiate on the right hand side so that's how you decide the marks with the step but the same question they can modify and give you three mark but how they'll give you three mark they say differentiate and simplify your answer to simplify your answer what you can do combine them as one single fraction so you combine them as one single fraction she'll become negative 3 exponential 2x plus 2 exponential negative 3x everything share one base negative 6 now you see so that's why i say how you decide the marks allocation for the question if they say three mark you must show three crucial step if it's a six mark you should demonstrate six crucial step that's the whole idea about the marking technique okay so of course if you are not sure you want to ask something you know you you, you want to clarify you can of course reach out to any of the at best teacher or math teacher we will help you now basically the seminar is over but i just want to take some time to you know show some common question that i think you should know okay i think you should know wait i can't pull it here just give me a second uh i'll pull one of the 
good paper you know like the specimen paper we can just go through uh, those kind of thing okay I'm not sure whether I have specimen paper yeah I have one I have one specimen paper let me just take one specimen paper here okay so you can see the screen right so this is a specimen paper what is specimen paper specimen paper usually is to show you when there's a syllabus change they will show you okay this is how the paper is going to look like after the syllabus change i think that's not important you just need to know what is specimen paper so you can see they have a very pattern okay now you can see we just discussed in a in a very gray manner huh? so now they say this polynomial has a factor of this so the keyword is has a factor Whenever they say has a factor, you must remember x equals to 2 or you can write as p equals to 2 with remainder 0. This one here, p to 0, that means we are trying to tell you there has no remainder. But of course, if they want you to find remainder, you just sub as 2 and whatever you get, that's your remainder. That's one. Then this one is a factorized state, all the solution. This is another common mistake. You see, I don't know what the answer is, but I can just guess roughly four mark you see how they give you the four marks so i assuming this is a cubic so you're going to have a tree solution student who skip the factorization you will lose one mark you must show the factorization then you must show this step you can't skip that's why i say you see how i'll show you the marks later on them so here you get x3 you get x negative 4 you get 5 four marks usually one mark will come from the other part whereby you use how to get this okay one mark on that part one mark is on the factorization one mark on splitting them one mark on final answer so these are how you decide what steps you need to show to secure your mark okay so be very careful now the next one you can see they say variable x and y related find dy dx they never say simplify you see just just now remember i show you this is two mark because you just need to differentiate it okay just differentiate it you should get the mark but if they put simplify the mark will go up to three already then this one remember i told you approximate change so approximate change you should straight away cling already delta y or delta x i'll just go through with you so i can tell this one uh this is this form you should know i think this form i've told you guys you want to do completing the square you can or there's another way you expand the bracket and compare let me just show you um so here will be x square minus 2qx minus q square plus r then px square minus 2pqx minus pq square plus r once you reach this far you can just compare oh shoot wait you can just come how can i get the same color again and again you can just compare the x square with the x square so you know p is 12 ready right away you can compare this x with x then you know that function in front is equal to 6 and the last one you can compare this two with the one without x at all so that's one way you can do or another way is you can perform completing the square but remember completing the square you must make sure that your a must be one like in this question here our a is not one you cannot divide remember this is another mistake students usually make they will claim that 12 x square minus 6 x plus 5 they tend to divide the whole equation by 12 nope if they say this equation equals to zero yes you can divide if they never put like that you should actually perform factorization so here is going to be 6 over 12 x plus 5 over 12 can you see because they never put it equals to zero when they don't put it equals zero that's when things become a little bit harder okay so you need to perform your factorization then only you do your completing the square or whatsoever lah. okay so you can see here ah, another keyword see another keyword greatest value greatest value means what maximum value minimum value those kind of thing huh? okay now this one is a third form remember i talked to you guys just now the third question you see this you know really this is definitely the third kind of question okay so third means confirm your final answer must be the most rationalized form you can't just leave hanging like that all right so be careful about that part uh this one you see it's a modulus graph like i said just now modulus graph means what you should do just get your point of intersection first then later you flip mm. it right that's much more easier uh, this one you can put the square or you can split left or right up to you do your preference uh this one another simple one. so you, i'm just going through with you a specimen paper you can see this is a this look like a circular measure question but it's not it's actually a differentiation you see there's your minimum maximum uh here's an integration I think that's it about it. This specimen paper. Oh, there's an arithmetic progression. They'll mention clearly one. You see, they'll mention clearly whether it's arithmetic, 
or its geometry so it ease you up to decide which formula you want to use okay uh, this is a differentiation question where you require to find the area remember the class i'll talk about doraemon pocket doraemon pocket so this is paper one now i'll try to pull paper two we'll just have a quick glance through of the specimen paper so you can roughly uh, see what is happening and what are the changes okay so specimen paper usually student rarely done okay rarely do so it's okay now one thing i just spot as i open the paper is no marks will be given for unsupported answer from a calculator that means the calculator is just a tool you can't just like remember the question that the part that i told you where it was 6x equals to 3 you straight jump to log 6 3 uh, this is all fall in this category okay so you can't do that kind of thing over here now let's just go to see the formula is a very generic formula if you need the formula remember it's your duty to remember now this one first one it may look hard but this is simultaneous equation you like it or not this is definitely a simultaneous equation then here is sketching a cubic graph something not if i see anything significant only i talk if not significant i won't talk ah this one now let's look at this huh? they said g inverse stating the domain and its range so actually the range we got ready okay for the inverse range is yes but the domain only we don't know so how we can decide the domain for this question my advice to you is you find the range for gx first you find the range for the gx that range become domain if you want to find domain in the inverse scan but it's challenging so that's why i say you do what you find everything in this function itself then you just flip it remember the table that i show earlier to you guys on the seminar part wait let me just find the v the, the the slides um it's under function i think i think i erased already okay you can just back forward the video it should be somewhere here i draw the table where you know hx the domain will become range the range will become domain uh, that that thing that we are talking about so that's my advice for you so this is something different uh, here g prime g prime okay g prime remember you need to differentiate then equal them okay differentiate equal them and find the x value now this one uh, take note please take note you can see here that your frequency or your cycle is 3 over 2x that means we only want 1.5 cycle we only want 1.5 cycle so this is a sine graph probably one complete cycle is like this and then another half just stop up to that that's what they want oh my god it's been an auto convert okay whatever but 1.5 cycle only so maybe this is a full cycle okay, this is a full cycle since they want half cycle I believe uh, go up to here one cycle yeah they only want up to here uh, that's it that's 1.5 cycle so be careful and then they also already mentioned showing the coordinates of the point this is what we talk about point of intersection kind of thing okay then the next part is this one nothing much you can see there they say arrange order so just use permutation combination I, I'm not seeing any significant if I see significant then I'll tell you okay Oh, here instantaneous rest remember the keyword instantaneous rest means declare v equals to zero must okay you must find at which time they be take rest no means it's gone this one also nothing this one is a similar circular measure question nothing significant the vector also mm, not really that hard this one just a sketch graph yeah pretty much like that this paper is quite easy though okay there is no tough differentiation and integration so i think pretty much like that for our seminar today so we already ended our seminar i hope it's useful for you guys okay hopefully it's useful so good luck and that's it thank you 